Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. 40% of Americans with kids want to continue to homeschool their kids after the COVID crisis ends, and 64% want school choice. We interview Ray Moore with Exodus Mandate. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we discuss the groundbreaking poll that could change American history forever, honestly. What is one of the best things that could come out of a horrible situation in the COVID coronavirus crisis is that people are enjoying homeschooling their kids. And now a poll from WorldNet Daily and the clear Real Clear Opinion Research shows that 40% of Americans wanna continue homeschooling their kids after the coronavirus crisis has ended. Is this the end of public school? Welcome Ray Moore with Exodus Mandate to the, to the program. Chaplain Moore, I am so honored uh, to meet you. Remind our audience, what do you do with Exodus Mandate? I'm the uh, founder and director, and it's a Christian ministry <clears throat> to urge and encourage and assist churches and Christian families to leave behind the government school system for the promised land of Christian schools and homeschooling. Exodus, I love it. And we've been doing that, uh, we're about nearly 25 years old, and it was pretty lonely there in the early days when I started this 20, 24 years ago. Well, how many children would you say um, you've seen the trends grow. Are, are there more and more people homeschooling and, and can you attribute that to some of your own efforts? Yes, uh, it's hard to track it precisely. We were among the first ministries or organizations to go out with such an aggressive approach. Uh, when I started this, most Christians were still kind of into the salt and light syndrome where they teach that their children should be in public school to be salt and light. And we have shown that that's demonstrably a false uh, paradigm. It's actually, I think, abusing that scripture text. Jesus did say be salt and light, but he didn't command us to put our children in pagan education. And so uh, we've been at it a long time, but we had something very unusual uh, really a uh, once in a hundred year event took place, was about six weeks ago when the COVID-19 crisis pretty well shut down all of public schools and, and private schools as well. So suddenly we had 55 million new homeschool children in America. Wow. And a lot of people don't know that there's 1.37 billion worldwide. Wow. And uh, this is beyond anything we could have ever dreamed or thought and prayed for. But up till that moment, there was about 2.5 to 2.8 million children being homeschooled. And most of them would have been even 70% or more. The rest, traditional Catholics and others that had a very traditional uh, moral code. So with all of those children now being homeschooled, and of course we detest the coronavirus, we pray that nobody is harmed from it, we, we're sad that businesses have been shut down, we're sad that schools had to shut down. But now the benefit is that parents are enjoying their children again, that children are learning the benefits of homeschooling, and in fact, they're, they're getting smarter at home than they might have at public school, so much so that now this new poll says 40.8% of Americans want to continue in some form of homeschooling after the COVID crisis has ended. That's an earthquake. If that comes true, what would become the future of American education? Well, we really honestly <clears throat> believe that after 
schools reopen, assuming they reopen in the fall, that we're going to see millions more in private, Christian, homeschools, virtual schools. We think preponderance amount will be in homeschools. We could see eight or 10 million uh, new homeschool children. And, and this is just astounding. The, uh, it's a once in a hundred year event. Uh, I like to call it a Kairos moment. You're a Greek man since you went to seminary. Yes. And the two Greek words for time, one is chronos or chronology. The other one is Kairos, which means a opportune divine moment, a special moment. And we're in one of those, I think, with, with homeschooling and Christian education. Well, we want parents to homeschool their kids. I've been advocating for years, like you, that parents should pull their children out of public schools if they can. Not everybody can do that. But what are some of the benefits? Why should people, apart from the coronavirus, what are the benefits you're gonna see if another eight million parents continue to homeschool? Well, it, we, we have enough empirical data and research now since the modern homeschool movement is really about 20, uh, 30 years old. We kind of date it from 1980. And so we have a, a large a body of children who are now adults and themselves have families and they're just a, a, a more stable uh, group, uh, highly educated. Uh, we know from a research done by Brian Ray of the National Home Education Research Institute that about 94% of Christian children who are homeschooled continue in the Christian faith and the traditions of their parents. Correspondingly, we know that 80% of Christian children who are public school leave the church and abandon the Christian faith in their early adult years. Did you say 94% compared to 80% the other way? Yeah, it's uh, about 80% uh, leave now, some do return when they get married and have their own babies. You know, they start trickling back to church. But generally speaking, the education and K-12 public school and also higher ed drives them away from the church wow. and the Christian traditions of their parents. But 93 to 94 percent of homeschool children continue in the Christian faith. That is reason alone, because if you want your kids to follow Jesus Christ, they're gonna be turned away when they go to what we referred to as pagan educators who ultimately teach secularism and even atheism. Let's take a short break. When we come back, what's the difference between Republicans and Democrats who took this poll? Who wants to homeschool? This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50 and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30 day prayer manual, how to liberate the world in 30 days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org or write to the address on your screen or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or from angels or from invisible demons. We've created a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels. We're offering a discount today while supplies last. It used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. 
Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Chaplain Ray Moore, former Army Chaplain, and now for the past 25 years has led exodusmandate.org, that's his website, recommending that parents pull their kids out of public schools and begin the homeschooling exodus mandate that is biblical and responsible and actually makes your kids smarter and increases the chances that they will retain their Christian faith. Ray, this poll that we're reading now from uh, real clear polling, it not only says that 40% of parents remarkably want to continue homeschooling after the coronavirus ends, but 64% approve of school choice. In other words, the government should not be forcing everyone into public schools. There should be charter schools, parochial schools, Christian schools, private schools, uh, or homeschooling. Maybe get a voucher instead of uh, wasting all your taxpayer dollars on only public government mandated schools. Um, what, are the, what are the options and what's the current state of the law with regard to school choice? It varies uh, state by state. Um, pretty much education K-12 education is seen as a state function, less than a federal function, even though the federal government is very involved. So most of those uh, uh, school choice uh, bills would take place at a state level, not a, at a federal level. Of course, I'm very wary of the voucher, personally, because it might bring government control back in to Christian schools if they take the money. So we think there's some alternative <clears throat> models that would be less risky for private and Christian schools. And most of the homeschool leadership are really opposed to that model for school choice. Well, now that parents want to continue homeschooling because they've tried it for a few weeks and discovered that their kids do just fine at home and maybe they are able to do it, um, there, there's another interesting part of this poll out of 2,122 resident uh, uh, registered voters that included 626 parents who participated in the questions about homeschooling. Of those parents surveyed, the breakdown is 45% Democrats and 42% Republicans. Actually, <coughs> more Democrats want to continue homeschooling than Republicans in this poll. Does that surprise you? Not really, and part of the reason is that um, a lot of minorities, um, uh, African-Americans, Hispanics, they realize uh, they're in many cases poor districts, and they realize that the public school is harming their children more than any others. Uh, Middle-class whites sometimes live in the suburbs and they can escape the schools or they think their public schools are, are good when they're really not. We have a joke here in the county I live in, which is a kind of an urban county. A few years ago, a lot of the evangelicals were leaving Richmond County and moving to Lexington County because it's a very Republican conservative county. And someone said, Ray, why are all the evangelicals leaving, moving out of Richmond County and moving to Lexington County? And I kind of jokingly said with tongue in cheek, I said, well, Lexington County has the best pagan public schools in South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, they, they're they okay with it if it's, you know, not an inner city school. So yeah. minorities want out and homeschooling is growing shockingly fast in the black community. That's one of the bright spots that I see. I have some numbers from that. Uh, it, the polling says that 36% of whites are more likely to continue homeschooling this fall compared to 50% of African Americans, 38% of Hispanics, and 54% of Asians. So you're right, uh, whites are, are not quite as likely to continue homeschooling, but blacks and Asians, it's off the charts. Yeah, this is a wonderful thing if it would happen. <clears throat> so I ask you to, in your audience to pray for that because we have really not taken and served well our African-American Hispanic community. And we have so many good stories about what's happening 
there right already before the shutdown took place. Well, you mentioned prayer, and that is exactly what I like to do as a former Navy chaplain. Maybe I could ask you as a former Army chaplain to lead us in a word of prayer. Okay. Father God, we thank you for your servant, Gordon Klingenschmidt. Thank you for the great stand that he took many years ago on behalf of religious freedom and prayer in the military chaplaincy and how you used him in a mighty way and how that reverberated around the world. Now we ask you, Lord, to continue to bless his work and our ministry to grow permanently homeschooling and Christian schooling. And we pray that you would raise up many champions in the African-American Hispanic community in this area. And we could see a work done in our day, as it says in Acts 13, that we would be astounded were it be to be described to us. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, I join in that prayer and I ask for, uh, for the benefit of American children across the land that they would be raised in the way that uh, uh, <clears throat> that scripture uh, declares that uh, when they're old, they will not depart from it. And Father, I ask that y you would bless the Exodus mandate, bless Ray Moore, and, and especially those parents who are home with their kids and, and maybe they didn't wanna be thrown in that situation, maybe it was inconvenient for a few weeks, but now that they see the benefit, Father, I pray that it becomes a, a, a beacon of hope for the future of American education, that parents will continue to bring home their kids and raise them right. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take another short break. When we come back, I'll ask Ray Moore about some of the resources he has available if you want to homeschool your kids giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that famine would be a sign of the end. And we are now facing a famine of biblical proportions in one of the poorest states in India, where our charity has sponsored up to 259 orphans and children for many years. But now there are thousands of people starving in the streets because of the unemployment there and we've been helping widows, like the letter we received from Sanuri, who writes to us and says, I stay with my three children in the slum. I was washing plates in the hotel and earning bread for my family, paying house rent. Suddenly I lost my income. After hotels were closed by the government, this was a shocking moment for me. Afterward, we could manage eating half a meal a day to manage a scanty ration for longer days. When there was no ration left for my family, I was quietly weeping outside with agony. An unknown fellow came and asked whether I am a widow. I said, yes. He wrote my name and address and asked me to collect ration from your office. I got that ration with joyful tears. I strongly believe that God helps the helpless during troubled times through benevolent people. You know, the benevolent people she's talking about are you and your generosity when you give through our ministry is actually helping her to see God. Would you please donate today at 866-Obey-God? Again, our phone number, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D and help us supply a matching gift. We've already given up to $10,000 to supply 100,000 meals. And there's somebody out there who could double that gift with one stroke of a pen. Please donate through our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and designate your gift to India Relief. Please give today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Ray Moore, president and founder of ExodusMandate.org. Uh, Ray, you're in South Carolina today, but you're active in many other states. Right, we have the Exodus Mandate, which is probably the oldest of these types of organizations. We have activity in about 20 states. I have a, actually a coordinator right there in Colorado Springs uh, <clears throat> that represents us in the state of Colorado. So we have some activity around the nation because we have a web page called exodusmandate.org, and I see you've got it posted. 
But what's happened most excitingly is that there's so many new uh, organizations that have spun up in the last few years. And I'm part of a new group. Um, I'm actually the chairman, more of an honorary chairman, of a group called PublicSchoolExit.com. And it's only a year old, and we've got some incredibly good people there. We've got Sam Sorbo. She's on our advisory council. Uh, Alex Newman is on the board. Uh, I am Dran Reese. And they have got a big staff, <clears throat> and, they, and so a lot of the resources – that your audience might be interested in on it are going to be on public school exit. Actually, they've kind of gone a little bit beyond Exodus mandate. Uh, we're good, but you know, there's I'm being uh, overtaken with all this good news and all <laughs> these new leaders, and I'm just sitting back, uh, Chaplain Klingen Schmidt, and I'm just enjoying it. At 76 years of age, my wife and I said, "Wow, we live to see this." It's Thank God. So hard to believe. I feel like I'm living a, a dream, a happy dream, and I won't wake up and it's not going to be true. <laughs> well, your life's work is impacting so many millions of kids. We recently interviewed Sam Sorbo on this program, and publicschoolexit.com, I think, is one of the sites she mentioned. You can get entire yeah, K through 12 curriculum. Uh, I think it's out of Texas <laughs> that she was a spokesman for this group. It's free. You can homeschool your kids. You can start them today. If they're in third grade, you can start them in the third grade classroom. If they're in seventh grade, you can do you know math and English and social studies. Uh, it's all free, and there are links through that website, publicschoolexit.com. Um, Ray, you also have some videos and DVDs that you've promoted over the years. There was one that had a school bus on it. I forget the name. Yeah, that's called indoctrinationmovie.com. And that did come out 10 years ago, but it was a sensation. Um, millions of people saw it, and I was the executive producer. But it was actually directed and produced by Colin Gunn and Joaquin Fernandez. I need to make sure they get the credit because I was a, I was kind of a, you know, in the background a little bit. It was my agenda and my mission, but they actually did it. So if your people are interested in that, they can go to indoctrinationmovie.com and ordered online. And it's still very relevant, even though it was uh, it came out in 2012, I believe, yeah. Well, fantastic, in, indoctrinationmovie.com. Yeah, and, and, and I've got, a, my wife and I wrote a book uh, some years ago called The Promise of Jonadab, J-O-N-A-D-A-B, and it's a good book for your audience, if they want to order for Father's Day and they contact us at our office, uh, you know, they can order it and we'll make a, send an autographed copy out for a little little donation. We can't just give them away. But uh, my website for that would be exodusmandate at gmail.com and they can order there and we'll send them an autographed copy with, for a donation. It's called The Promise of Jonah Dad. be very wonderful for a father, a son, a brother, on Father's Day, which is gonna be June 21st. So it's kind of like your website, but it's a Gmail account, exodusmandate at gmail.com, or your website, right. exodusmandate.org to learn more. Uh, right. Ray, I, I'm so thrilled to know you. I have written, uh, and nobody knows this yet, but I've written a, a short booklet, which I wanna publish very soon, called Homeschool Catechism. And if you remember back uh, 500 years ago, Martin Luther wrote a catechism for children. Of course, the Catholic Church has a catechism. Uh, but I think yeah. for American evangelicals, whether your children are, are public schooled, private schooled, homeschooled, they ought to have little easy to memorize quotes. And I put, a, I put together 100 quotes that every child can memorize at home with their parents' Send supervision. And it has things like the Lord's Prayer, like the Ten Commandments. Um, very simple things and, and some patriotic quotes from our founding fathers, maybe the Constitution. Things that every child should memorize that'll give them a foundation. And I wonder if, if uh, you would maybe take a look at that and, and write the foreword for me. I'd be honored to do that, please. Yeah, thank you so much. In fact, that's one of the advantages at my age being the old timer in the group. Everybody's asking me to do endorsements and forwards. <laughs> <clears throat> but I've got a couple of books in the can right now, and I hope to complete them before I pass. Pray for me that I'll be able to keep up. There's another 
four or five years. I want to go until I'm 80, 82. And somebody said, don't set your sight short. But I feel myself getting a little uh, weary at times. But I, my heart is strong. My, it's fresh. My energy is good. And I shouldn't be so excited at my age about <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> Well, you and your wife are, are patriots and inspiring to the rest of us. Um, I do wanna give you the last word here. We're almost out of time, just one minute left. Uh, what should people know? What should they do? And, and what do you wanna leave in their mind? You've left the schools. You were forced to leave, but now you, the most difficult decision has been made for you, Christian, and you can do it. God has ordained this method to raise children and train children, and, and you will fulfill Malachi 4, 6, the last verse of the Old Testament where the Lord said, I will send the prophet and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So we know that this is going to rebuild the family and your children will not be deprived of a good education. You can do it. Amen. There is a, a biblical mandate. It's the Exodus mandate. And as, as parents pull their kids out of public schools and, and exit the pagan education system, there is a Christian education system waiting for you in your own house. Our thanks to Ray Moore, his website, exodusmandate.org. Our website is prayinjesusname.org. Again, that's prayinjesusname.org. If you click on that website, please donate and please click on the recurring monthly pledge sponsor program. For as little as a dollar a month, you can set it and forget it and help us bring this program to you. You can also donate by phone at 866-Obey-God or even just call for prayer, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. We'll see you next time. The Bible says this in James 1, that pure religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. You know, we have been sponsoring up to 259 orphans and children in one of the poorest states in India for many years, but now there is a famine of biblical proportions happening because of the unemployment there. We are sponsoring people who otherwise cannot feed themselves. We've given over $10,000 to feed up to 100,000 meals to the poorest of poor in one of the poorest states in the world. We need your support. We need your financial contributions. Can you help us? There's somebody out there watching who could give $1,000 or even $10,000 toward a matching gift for what we have already provided. Please donate today. Prayinjesusname.org is our website. Or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please help us feed the poor today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.